I mean, the micropuncture needle was pretty much the size of the kid's head. You are now listening to Sorel Gorgor MD. Hey guys, it's, uh, well, you know who it is. What is pediatric IO? Let me repeat something to you which I found to be invaluable in my training. Kids are not little adults. One of the first cases I did in my pediatric eye rotation was a tunnel pick placement. A tunnel pick is among the most basic of image-guided interventions. But the patient I was seeing was three months old and had congenital heart disease. I mean, the micropuncture needle was pretty much the size of the kid's head. So I watched as my attending skillfully directed the needle under ultrasound towards the kid's tiny jugular vein. Carefully, he threaded just a few centimeters of wire into the IVC and finally cut a three French pick, that's a one millimeter thick pick. He cut it to something like seven centimeters and then threaded it into the vein until the tip was in the cable atrial junction. Normally a tunnel pick is an unremarkable procedure, but this was a sight to see. Today in Sorelgar MD, we're talking about pediatric IR. So I spent two months training in a nationally ranked 500 bed specialized pediatric hospital, which took referrals from pretty much all over the Southeast. What's the first thing to know about pediatric IR? Well, I already alluded to it. It's a size issue. There's something vastly different about treating a patient that's five kilograms in size versus someone that's say 100 kilograms in size. So a simple procedure like a tunnel pick becomes a really big deal. Angiography becomes a really big deal. I took part in a lower extremity angiogram on a one month old premature infant. I mean the common femoral artery in the groin was less than a millimeter in size. With skill and practice, it is possible to get into that vessel, and we did an aortogram showing the aorta to be 2.5 millimeters in diameter. I mean, that's tiny. Working in a specialized pediatric hospital means dealing with super sick kids. A surprising number of these kids are walking around with organ transplants. So what does that mean for IR? Well, it means that we're going to be doing a lot of biopsies. These kids with transplant need biopsies on a regular basis to assess the health of the transplant and to assess the effectiveness of the anti-rejection medication regimen. So I did a ton of ultrasound guided liver and kidney biopsies and I learned some really nice techniques to help control bleeding when you're doing a biopsy. But there can also be other issues. When you have a transplant, you have several anastomoses or surgically created connections between the transplant organ and the recipient's native anatomy. So these things have to be hooked up into one another. I performed a hepatic angiogram on a patient that recently got a liver transplant and we demonstrated a occluded transplant hepatic artery. That meant that that patient had to be immediately relisted for liver transplant. I mean, these are really high stakes procedures. One major category of disease and procedures that are seen in pediatric IR is the treatment of vascular malformations. So this is a very interesting group of diseases. Broadly speaking, there are low flow malformations and there are high flow malformations. Low flow are the most common and the most common amongst those are what's called venous malformations. I was able to see and treat a large number of venous malformations. Treatment of a venous malformation is very similar to treatment of a varicose vein. The key to treatment is to slowly sclerose the malformation by repeatedly filling it with a sclerosis detergent foam. This is literally a thick soap bubble foam that you put into the lesion, and this closes off that abnormal venous malformation and diverts blood flow into more normal veins. A patient with a VM, venous malformation, may return every two to three months for several years, and over time, their symptoms will resolve, the size and the appearance of that venous malformation will improve, and over time, that venous malformation will be cured. And this is all through a minimally invasive procedure that is well tolerated and generally very safe. Now, on the other hand, we also see, or I saw a few very crazy, interesting arterial venous malformations. So in recent memory, I had a patient, a newborn patient, born with trisomy 21, that's Down syndrome. He had a arterial portal shunt, which was then connected to a portal venous shunt. So he had basically a large arterial venous shunt. Uh, over time, this could have led to heart failure. So uh, using a percutaneous approach, making three small incisions on the abdomen, neck, and groin, uh, we were able to treat that patient's malformation using several thousands of dollars worth of coils. We were able to close off those shunts and restore a near normal circulation. This was all done through a percutaneous, minimally invasive approach. And in general, that patient is going to have a pretty reasonable quality of life going forward. What I learned from pediatric IR? Well, I learned how to manage vascular malformations. I learned some general pediatric IR procedures such as lumbar punctures and bone biopsies. But the most important thing I learned is that pediatric IR is really a distinct specialty. It takes a specialized team. I think in the ideal setting, you have dedicated fellowship trained pediatric interventionalists. You have a dedicated pediatric anesthesiologist. 
You have a dedicated staff of pediatric IR technologists and nurses, and that's the way I think you do it right. Anything less, and I think you really risk not doing the right thing for a sick kid in need. And I would have personally a low threshold to refer a patient to a dedicated pediatric IR center like the one I trained at if I did not feel comfortable treating that disease. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hope you learned something about pediatric IR. Let me know what you thought about this video, whether you liked it or hated it. Sorel MD, primarily adult interventional radiologist.